Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person. And I sell yarn through my website yarnaddict.co.uk where you can also sign up to my newsletter, uh, find out information about my online courses, my in-person workshops and links to my pattern shops. And you can also find all those links below this video. So welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk about this new design which is in the latest issue of Knitting Magazine. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and uh, leave me a comment and let me know what you think of this design. So issue um, 241 of Knitting Magazine. That's the cover, very summary top on the cover. Um, that summary top is by Pat Mancini and it's knitted in Rico Creative Cotton um and it's actually inside the magazine it's on the page opposite my design so that's quite good fun so let's have a chat about this um pattern this design i'm going to talk about how it's constructed some of the design details uh, about the yarn and just a quick look through what else is in this uh, issue of the magazine so knitting 200 and what did i say 241 yes 241 is in the shops in the uk at the moment so let's talk about the yarn first and I'll refer to the magazine just to make sure I get the details right. So it is knitted in hedgehog fibres alpaca DK, which is 90% merino, 10% alpaca and it has approximately, approximately 225 metres per 100 grams. And the smallest two sizes use five skeins and then it's six, six and seven skeins. Um, and the colourway is beach bunny. And it was worked on four and a half millimeter and four millimeter circular needles. Um, so that's the picture of the modeled uh, design. I will um, pop that picture in somewhere as well. So uh, let's have a look at the actual design and um, and just a few of the design details. So the body has a one by one rib, which is quite unusual for me. I don't do one by one rib very often. But the one by one rib looks really nice in this yarn, I must admit. It does look very neat. Also, this was knitted by one of my sample knitters and she did an amazing job. I always feel, feel when I do one by one rib, it never looks that neat. But this looks absolutely amazing. So maybe she's just better at knitting one by one rib than I am. So it is knitted in the round to the underarms. And the uh, lace pattern kind of goes out in a V shape from the centre. So we have these yarn of the lines that come out from the center in a v on the front and on the back and it has a one by one rib around the neckline so you knit it in the round to the underarms so there's no seams at the side here and when you get to the underarm you put, split the stitches for the front and the back and you knit both separately to the shoulders and then you join the shoulders by working a three needle cast off which gives you a very neat um shoulder seam there is a seam there but it's not as thick as a proper seam if you know what I mean um and then you pick up stitches for the sleeves around the armhole work short rows across here which is really really easy um even if you're brand new to short rows I don't think you'll have any problems with that and then you knit the sleeves in the round from here down um and finish off with a one by one rib that means if you want the sleeves longer or shorter than it is, you can just keep going for longer or um, stop quicker. So I can see on the, um, I keep catching this on on my screen. But there's like a, on the screen, it looks like a brown thing there. I was like, have I got something on it? But that, if you're wondering, is part of the yarn. So this is quite a variegated yarn and there are um, some paler colours and some brighter colours. And it does have this kind of flashing of some of the colours occasionally. So I didn't actually knit this one, my sample knitters did. And I assume that she just knitted it in the round. One skein, then the next skein, then the next skein. Um, a lot of people recommend when you knit with variegated, especially hand dyed yarn, that you actually alternate the skeins. So you would do one round in one skein, one round in the other. If you're knitting rows, you would do two rows in one skein, two rows in the other. I didn't ask my sample litter, my sample litter to, to alternate the skeins and I don't think she's done that. 
problem is sometimes you can when you go from knitting in the round to at the top here where it's back and forth so at, to the underarms you basically have the whole width of the front and back so you have a lot of stitches on the needles and then from here on up you only have half the number of stitches you had at the bottom so sometimes that can alter the way the yarn behaves but on this one it hasn't so you get these some slightly brighter flashes of color all the way through um so i really like that because it does look a bit more random if you want to do this in a solid color you absolutely could i think sometimes it's difficult to find designs that work well with variegated yarns you have to be careful that the um yarn doesn't take away from the lace pattern or the stitch pattern so if you have a quite a BC all over stitch patterns sometimes working with a variegated yarn can be quite difficult because it just hides the stitch pattern so I've seen people who've done amazing lace patterns but they've done in a variegated yarn and you just can't see it um it just really hides the lace pattern whereas I think this lace pattern is simple enough and bold enough that it works okay with this it works well with this variegated yarn of course if you wanted to do it in a solid color you absolutely can you can do it in a self-striping color or you can make stripes there are a lot of different options with this um design you can also do the body in one color and the sleeves in a different color if you wanted to um i did say about making the sleeves longer i didn't say about making the body longer if you wanted the body longer you would need to knit longer um before you split for the sleeves there's no shaping in the body so it's just straight up um but this comes at the underarm so you wanted it longer you'd need to knit the body longer uh, before you get to the underarm so the lace pattern is fairly simple it's just knit two together yarn overs on that side ssk yarn overs on that side that's all there is so very very simple um and I kept the sleeves plain in stocking stitch so that when you do the short row shaping and things, you haven't got to worry about the lace pattern or anything. Um, that's why I kept the sleeves fairly plain. You could also do this sleeveless. If you wanted just a sleeveless top, you could just um, knit the body as it is. And then instead of picking up stitches for the sleeves, you could just pick up a few stitches and work a few rows in um, the one by one rib. You just need to make sure the number of stitches you pick up can be divided by two and then you can do the one by one rib for a few rounds just to get them neat edging um, or you could also do them short sleeves so if you wanted just like calf sleeves for example you could do the short row shaping and then when you join to work in the round here you could then just do a few rounds of one by one rib um, to finish it off so there's lots of options i think with this design the yarn is absolutely gorgeous so i didn't actually knit with this um it, we must have done this last summer i think i think the yarn arrived when i was away but i can't remember where i was um because i think i have a feeling we sent it we got the yarn sent directly to my sample knitter and that she knitted the swatches and that i didn't even swatch with it because i don't remember knitting with this yarn um but it feels absolutely gorgeous and it is has such beautiful even stitch definitions if you look at the sleeves let me grab that sleeve which is closer i don't know how easy it is to see it let's see if i can bring this a bit closer when you look at the sleeves you can see the stitch definition is so beautiful and even and um that's just a sign that it's a really nice bouncy beautiful yarn so i really like this and i would love to use this yarn again in designs in the future uh, sometimes our pack of yarns can be a little bit too fussy for my liking but this one it has a little bit of fuss so you can just see that it's alpaca but it's not so much fuss that it would be annoying um i find some yarns a pack of yarns that have a lot of fussiness in them i do i don't always like that as much but this has just a tiny bit that you can just feel it has alpaca in it it's incredibly soft so you can feel there is that alpaca silkiness and softness to it without it being overwhelming the pure alpaca yarns depending on how they're spun but sometimes i find they can be a little bit uneven so you wouldn't get the beautiful even stitch definition you get here sometimes you get slight and need more a little bit more unevenness um but with the merino which is nice and plump and then the alpaca for extra softness and silkiness 
um, and a little bit of fuss, a little bit of kind of halo, uh, makes this um, absolutely perfect. So I really like this yarn. So that is what the magazine looks like. Really like that the style goes with a pair of white trousers, very simple. Um, let's have a look at what else is in this issue. So that's the cover design. Uh, let's start from the back, shall we, in this issue. So there's the normal pull about town column at the back. And then um, Knitting Magazines put, puts all the patterns in the back. So the back section that I'm just flicking through quickly now has all the patterns. So instead of the patterns being mixed in with all the photos and features and stuff, you get to here and then all the patterns are together at the back. And then there is Joe Allport's A to Z of Knitting Techniques. We've got to R, which is R is for reading your knitting. Um, and she's talking about uh, casting on and off. This is part four, so I'm assuming the reading and knitting is a four part series. I can't remember now what was in the last issue. And then there's a letter section. And the thing that caught my eye here was a picture of Michelle Obama. Uh, it's Michelle Obama, um, uh, latest book, The Light We Carry. I'm assuming that's her second book. I did read the book that she um, wrote just after um, they finished being, or her husband finished being president. Um, so I assume this is a new carry, which I haven't read. But I might see if I can get that on my um, Audible app, uh, because I do like um, listening to audiobooks when I walk the dog. Uh, Michelle Obama is also a knitter. Um, she's done been on social media lately and a few interviews I think where so she's talked about being a knitter because I've seen a lot of that being shared on social media recently. Then there's the Sarah, um, Ask Sarah column with Sarah Hazel and then these all oh, these are cute so there's a um, uh, llama very cute llama and then there's a little elephant mobile can you see that very very cute I'm not very good at making things like that. Um, not very good at like novelty things and toys and things. And then we have, I think those two designs on this page, uh, these two are from uh, Drops Design and this one is from Pat Mancini. So sweater, a cow and a waistcoat for men. Um, some home items. Very bright, cheerful and colourful. And then this feature they do in every issue where they take three of the patterns from that issue and show it in different colours. So that's my sweater. Then they show it in three different colours. And then they show some other things that you can wear with it. So this sweater is a little bit shorter. So it would be per perfect to wear with um, high-waisted trousers, high-waisted long skirts or dresses. Um, I was actually... Just before I filmed this, I had to pop out and drop off a parcel. And I was actually thinking, because I knew I was coming home to film this, and I was actually thinking, um, I quite fancy knitting myself this sweater. Because <laughs> I want to knit some sweaters this year. And I was thinking, maybe I should knit this one. Um, another cardigan and some other garments here. Um, and, oh, that's a beautiful shawl down here. That is by Brian Smith. Lovely headband by Christine Boggis and a really colourful, uh, fun cardigan by Bored Nicholas. That's knitted in Rowan Big Wool. And a wrap there, rainbow wrap by Rico Design. And a couple of more sweaters by Joe Allport and Pat Mancini. And this my sweater and a top by Pat Mancini. Oh, Pat Mancini's got three things in this issue. And then that's bright flower top. And then there is a yarn page where they um, review different yarns. So they're looking at Sheepies, Sheepies, Truly Scrumptious, Starcraft, Merry Go Round, XL, Macintosh, Donegal, Rich Tweed, and Four Ply. This is the DK version of the Macintosh Donegal Tweed, which I used in um, design two issues ago I think in Knitting Magazine and then they're looking at a couple of Rico yarns, King Cole yarns, Stylecraft and the Fibre Company. Um, those are all the yarns they're looking at in this issue 
and this is just a subscription page as in the sign that was in a few issues ago i think and then there's a book review page just looking to see if there's any books there i can see taking a closer look at and then there's an interview with um yanni yanni octopus um deborah ratson took up knitting on her doctor's advice after being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and says its therapeutic nature saved her life she says shares her story and i'm assuming she does hand dyeing now because there's lots of beautiful hand dyed yarn i must admit i hadn't heard of the yarny octopus so i will be checking out her website and her social media um i should share my knitting story because i um I don't think I would have shared it on this YouTube channel, or at least not for a long time. Um, I was in a very dark place when I got back into knitting. And then there's a uh, colour therapy, just some things about 10 nitty ways to brighten up dark days. Um, and then there is a the knitting detective in the golden age of crime fiction, he was the ultimate knitting sleuth. Brenna Miss Kelly gets out her microscope and investigates. So that looks quite interesting. Um, and then there is uh, oh, a cachet of crafty curiosity. So Christine Boggis, who's the editor of Knitting Magazine, is looking into some of the delights of the Knitting and Crochet Guilds collection. So there's looks some quite interesting stuff here, especially if you're into knitting history. Some beautiful designs that are featured here um, or pictures of knitting rather than designs and then there's a what's on um, we've got a ravel coming up that's this week yes yeah, so it's this week so when this video is out it'll have already happened and then in March we have Yorkshire Yarn Fest, Buxton Wool Gathering, Fibre Quest oh that's in Somerset, Somer 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 Somerset that's not too far from me. East Anglia Yarn Festival, Far Woolly West, which is in Cornwall. Um, Stitch Festival, doesn't say where that is. Rowan Connect, doesn't say where that is either. And Soil to Soil, a regenerative approach to designing knitwear. So that's some interesting things I'll be taking a closer look at. Um, and there's some new knitting products. Um, I like these kind of news pages. They have a little bit of a, oops, that thing here about Wonderwall, which is coming up in April, and I will be there. Um, it's a little thing about uh, Michelle Gregory, who's the founder of the Knit School. I did an online class course for her a couple of years ago, I think. And she's also going to be using one of my patterns, my Katzen pattern, in a recent, in an upcoming uh, knit school, um, knit along, I guess it is. Uh, so um, do check out um, the knit school by Michelle Gregory. She used to run the um, Loveliest Yarn Company and Banshee Yarns, and I think she is stopping those at the moment to focus on knit school. And then there's just some young company news and things like that. Um, so lots of interesting stuff in this issue. Looking forward to having a closer look at it. It only arrived this morning. I've been wanting to film this video this week. This sample arrived back last week, I think. But I wanted to try and wait till the magazine came before I filmed this video. But I really want to get it done this week. So I'm glad the magazine arrived this morning. So I had a quick look at it while I was having lunch. Uh, but I haven't read it properly yet. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and leave me a comment to let me know what you think. Um, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.